Do you find yourself just slightly out of range of the stats you need to craft a piece of gear? Do you want a way to get gil with minimal effort as a combat class? Let's talk about it. Alright, let's start with the most basic question. What is Materia? Well, they're kind of like these gems that you put into your gear to increase certain stats. Materia has a really rich and long history across the many Final Fantasy games in the franchise, but in Final Fantasy XIV, Materia acts as a way to get more mileage out of your gear, whether it's for crafting, gathering, or combat. The first thing I want to cover is how and where to get Materia, since you can't start putting it in stuff until you actually own some. There are a couple of ways to get Materia, but the first question you need to answer is what kind of Materia do I need? There's a lot of different materia in the game, and lots of materia when you go on the market board to try and find a specific piece, which can make it difficult to try and find exactly what you need. And don't even get me started on those exorbitant prices. But if you don't want to pay those huge prices, how do you get the materia that you need? Well, the answer is quite simple. You just have to do the content you need the materia for. If you need materia for your crafting gear, then you need to do a bunch of script crafting and then go to a script merchant and buy the materia you need from them. Same NPC and same process for gathering as well. If you want combat materia, then you need to do combat content, but not just any combat content will do. The most reliable way to get combat content is to get clusters. Think of them like tokens to trade for materia, which you can give to a materia vendor. You can get clusters for completing two different roulettes as a level 80 or above class that is the current role in need, which you can see right here at a glance. You will receive two different types of clusters from completing the leveling and alliance raid roulettes, antho clusters and dendro clusters, which can be exchanged for materia of grade 9 and 10 here shown at the bottom of the tooltip. There are a couple less reliable ways to get materia, such as running level 90 dungeons to get random combat materia of grade 9, or you can buy them with the sacks of nuts from killing rank mobs in the hunt board dailies. There's a really simple way to tell apart materia at a glance. If you look closely, you'll notice a pattern for the categories of materia based on color. Combat materia can be three different colors, red for the stats that directly influence damage, purples for the stats that directly affect your cooldowns, and yellow for the stats that directly affect your tankiness and MP regeneration. Crafting materia can only come in one color, blue, and gathering materia also only comes in one color, green. You can even tell apart the different grades of materia from an expansion from one another if they have this little blue dot on their icon. With a dot is a grade higher than without, so making sure that you have the dot is a must. There's one last way to get materia, and it's free, but it's random and takes a while to build up. If we take a look at the tooltip for a piece of gear, we'll find a percentage called Spirit Bond. Once this percent reaches 100%, it's maxed out and cannot be increased further. But what does Spirit Bond mean and how can I get materia out of it? Well, we gotta head back over to our favorite Gobby Mutamix over on the outskirts of Blackbrush Station for that. If you talk to this guy, you could take the quest Forging the Spirit, and once you're done, you'll not only unlock the ability to turn that 100% Spirit Bond into a random materia, but you'll also unlock the other quests at Mutamix's place, so if there's one thing you're going to take away from this video, let it be this one. In order to transform the Spirit Bond into a piece of materia, you need to open up the drop-down menu for your piece of item, then select Extract Materia, and not Retrieve Materia. I personally mess this part up sometimes, and it can be really, really frustrating. Once you hit Extract Materia, you will revert the Spirit Bond on the item back to 1%, and a random materia will appear in your inventory that corresponds to the piece of gear that it came from. Combat gear gives combat materia, crafting gear gives crafting materia, and gathering gear gives gathering materia, obviously. But what materia should I be using? Well, there's a really easy way to tell. But a good rule of thumb is that you want to be using the highest grade materia you can at all times. When we look at the tooltip of any piece of materia, we can see the base item level required to make use of all of the stats awarded by the materia. So make sure that you're looking at this number when you're using it. Now that we know how to tell apart materia and how to get materia, we can talk about how to actually get it in your gear. If you're a crafter, then you can put the materia into your own gear by right-clicking a piece of that as a slot and simply putting it in like this once you've completed the blue quest, Waking the Spirit, given to you by this guy over at Mutamix's place. You can see what level crafter you need to be to be able to put a piece of materia into the chosen piece of gear right here at the bottom of the tooltip. Now, if you aren't a crafter, then you have two options. You can either, one, go to a materia melder and get materia into the slots in your gear for a fee, or two, you can have another player with the appropriate level crafters meld it in for you. The player aspect of materia melding is really important if you're trying to get your gear to the next level, as well as a process called overmelding, as spoken by the community, or advanced melding as is referred to by the game. In order to overmeld, you need to complete the blue quest, Melding Materia Muchly. The process can be a bit complex, but try and stick with me here. Take my hand and I'll guide you through this mess, and if you're scared of math, then I won't judge you if you chicken out here. Still with me? All right. So there are some tricks and rules of thumb that can help you guide your decisions. The first thing you want to do when melding materia onto your gear is to check out its tooltip. Right here at the top, you'll find a very important piece of information about whether a piece of gear can be overmelded or not. 
Blue gear tends to not allow overmelding, whereas green and white rarity gear usually do. To give you an example, we'll take a look at two pieces of ninja gear that I'm currently using at the time of making this video. This classical dagger is a green rarity weapon, so I've pushed it to its limits and slotted all the materia I can at maximum, which is 5. Meanwhile, this pair of Radiance Gloves of Scouting only have two materia in them. Because my gloves are a blue rarity, I can't put more materia into it than it has slots for. But there's one important thing to take away from putting materia into your gear, and it's how you can tell when you can and can't slot something in. Here's that math part I was talking about earlier, so settle in. Every piece of gear in the game has something called stat caps, which boiled down to its most basic terms means that you can only have so much of a stat in an item. Let's take a look at a brand new fresh healer chestplate. It doesn't forbid advanced melding in this little section right here in its tooltip, so that means we can overmeld it. Now I'm going to make myself clear right off the bat. I am NOT trying to advise you on what specific material you want in your items. These are my melds and they probably aren't the best most perfect as they could be. Moving past that disclaimer, let's try and affix some materia to the chestplate. Open up the drop down menu for the item and select meld and you'll open up this window. If you want this to look a bit cleaner I recommend taking out any materia you won't be using for your gear just so that way the list is a bit shorter and you don't accidentally put in something way lower than you intended. So I've been playing a lot of Sage's expansion and I want to start taking it into raids. Let's see about putting some materia in there that would help with my healing and shielding. Since Sage is a shield healer that means that when my shields crit they're doubly good so let's see about putting some crit materia inside. First let's select the chest plate. Once it's been selected it will be highlighted like this and then some numbers will appear at the bottom. These are the stack caps. No more of a stack can be put into a piece of gear than the amount displayed in these little boxes. There's currently no critical hit in this chest plate, indicated by the 0 out of 244, so let's put some crit materia in. I've prepared some materia here of two different grades, but there's a couple of reasons why we want to put in those grade 10s first. Because this chest plate has two slots in it, that means that the first two materia going into those slots have a 100% chance of going in. Boom and boom. Now we have 72 out of 244 crit on the chest plate with the first two slots filled. Now we can try to overmeld it. This is the technical part, so buckle up. The first materia that goes in over the amount of slots that is afforded on a piece of gear has a special rule. The materia that come after it can't be any grade higher. They have to be lower grades. This means that if we were to put in a grade 9 in this spot right here, the first overmeld spot, we would not be able to put any grade 10s after it. So because of this rule, let's put another grade 10 in this first overmeld attempt. Now there's a whole lot of information here in this window than there was last time, but it's a whole lot less complicated than it works. Same procedure here, we can see that the percentage chance of the materia going into this overmelt slot is right here. It's not too high, but that's the price we're trying to pay for pushing our gear to its absolute limit. Well what's this little blurb of text right here? Well, what it boils down to is if you select this box, you can attempt to use all of that type of materia you have in your inventory to try and meld it into this slot. It follows the same process as trying to meld one by one and will only consume as many as it would normally have taken, so let's select this box and cross our fingers that it won't use too much of our materia. Alright, now that we've got materia in our first overmeld, let's try and fill up the other two spaces for this piece of gear. Let's see what happens if we try to use another grade 10 of materia after this point. It simply says that we can, so let's try and use the next best thing, some grade 9s. Same procedure, hoard up some materia, click the box and hit meld and cross your fingers, and then again for the last slot. For the sake of my wallet, I'll just put the percent chance of each materia going in for each slot on a piece of gear that could be overmelded. Good luck with your melds, and as always, if you have any questions or tidbits that I missed about materia, make sure to leave a comment about it. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already made sure that you're subscribed, then please consider doing so. If you're already subscribed and want to support me further, consider following the links in the description to do so. Until next time, take care.